in the 1980s. She used to dance wildly with you in those days. She says you were a crazy dancer even back then. Hey, Big Mike, you actually remember dancing with this girl's mother 30 years ago? Truthfully, I was totally wasted on liquor, drugs, and methamphetamines every single day of my entire life during the entire decade of the 80s, all of the 70s, as well as a major portion of the 90s. It was all one big blur. I'm lucky I remember what city I lived in. I do remember a myriad of nameless, faceless young females who kicked my first wife Valerie in the shins and shoved her aside just for a moment's opportunity to dance with Big Mike. I was famous or more accurately notorious at all the East Village dance clubs, the Ritz, later known as Webster Hall, the Cat Club, the Palladium, the Saint, Irving Plaza, the Electric Circus, Danceteria, and other downtown venues, tracks, Baja, Peppermint Lounge, Hurrahs, Bonds International Casino, Area, Pizza Go Go, The Tunnel, The Red Pirate, Xenon, later known as New York, New York, Club USA, and even Studio 54 during the networking days of ex yippie Jerry Rubin when he was a yuppie guru. I would dance like a man possessed until I inevitably vomited all over the club's dance floor, oh. at which point the management would dispatch the bar back with a mop and a bucket and a wheeled garbage can to clean up after me. The DJ would emerge from his booth, greet us, me and my ex-wife Valerie, and my dance partner, gushing, you two are so Fucking awesome! You always start the dance every weekend! You are the best fucking dancers here! Here, take some drink tickets! Your drinks are on me! Sergio, get them up in a bucket over here pronto! What do you want me to play? Anything, anything at all you want! I'll play it! Just name it! Ugh! Ugh! Play some Stones! I always requested the Stones! Every DJ has at least one Stones track on their playlist guaranteed! This next song! Goes out to Big Mike and Valerie, the most awesome fucking dancers in the universe. Jump and Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. Go for it, kids. Start dancing again all over again. After some time, whenever the doorman spotted me and my wife showing up behind the velvet ropes, the management would assign a bar back to follow us around the dance floor with bucket and mop in hand, anticipating <laughs> the nightly vomiting performance, and also assign the biggest, fattest, meanest bouncer on duty as an escort whose sole job was to clear a private dance space on the crowded dance floor for our exclusive loose only by flinging the other club patrons into the walls and picking them up and hurling them across the dance floor if they accidentally strayed too close to our circle of friends. Hey, Big Mike, you were uh, drunk and high all the time. Does that mean that you were liquored up and drugged while on duty as a registered nurse on the women's gynecological ward at St. Luke's Hospital? Drunk, boys and girls? Stone, boys and girls? Of course not, kids. I was the consummate professional in those days. I did store my six packs of Corona in the blood bank next to the units ready for transfusing just to ensure that my precious beers were maintained at a country an optimal cool temperature of precisely 38 degrees Fahrenheit for maximal consumption enjoyment after work. I did come into work suffering Olympic-sized hangovers, sleeping them off in the patients' bathtubs of unoccupied hospital rooms and vomiting in their shower stalls. On one memorable occasion, I was unable to reach one of the bathrooms on time, choosing instead to hang my head over the seventh floor balcony terrace of the Scripture Pavilion and vomiting onto the sidewalk of Morningside Drive, 70 feet below. Unfortunately, I failed to check the area directly under the terrace beforehand, and as it turned out, some poor, unfortunate, homeless vagabond had pinched his encampment beneath that very overhang, and he received a face full of steaming, hot, rancid vomit for his troubles when he gazed skyward, determined what species of strange, winged, migratory bird could call Earl, 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 from the heavens above. What the hell, Earl? Oh, shit! Some motherfucker just threw a ball over me! Hey, white man, if I ever sees you on the street, I'm gonna cut your white ass! At which point, I proceeded to vomit the other half of my stomach contents. Two 40 dogs of cold 45 more liquor and a half a pastrami sandwich upon the ungrateful little ragamuffin's lice-infested head. And when he continued to shake his filthy little vomit-encrusted fist up at me in rage, he received the third helping of fresh 
vomit on his grimy, sunken, grizzled mug, this time containing merely my stomach pile, my gallbladder, and half my remaining disease-laden, serotic, fatty liver for his troubles. <laughs> <laughs>